More Than Conquerors Ministries presents Robin Gould, pastor of Victory Christian Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, with a dynamic message that will enrich your life. Living in a natural world, having to interact with natural people about natural things all the time, makes it difficult to live the spirit life. It's something we must decide to do and press into. In fact, it makes the difference between victory and defeat. The degree to which we operate in the spirit will determine the degree of success that we experience. Pastor Gould sheds light on how much the Bible points to the fact that believers are supposed to live the spirit life. He then teaches what we need to do to accomplish it. If you are tired of struggling as a Christian or just desire to be strengthened in this area, take advantage of the powerful four-part CD series, The Spirit Life. Purchase this special series for only $27. Order by debit or credit online at vccenter.net or by calling 704-602-6011. about today? Establishing. Establishing a Christian home. Now the only way for us to have a strong and healthy society and a strong and healthy church is for us to have strong and healthy families. Yes. Period. That's the only way this church will be healthy is if we have healthy families. It's the only way our city and our nation will be healthy and stable and strong is if there are healthy families. And so we're going in this direction and we'll see how long we go. Let's turn our Bibles to the 127th division of the Psalms and then we'll go from there. Now we know that Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24 in the 15th verse, Joshua said, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. He said, as for me and my house. He said, but as for me and my house, my house, not just me, but my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to have a godly Christian home. Amen. And the 127th division of the Psalms Bible reads in the first verse, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord builds the house. Building everything on the principles of God is what brings success. Building your personal life, your business, your marriage, the raising of your children, any and everything that you endeavor to do, unless the Lord builds it, you labor in vain. Amen. We cannot be wise in our own eyes and think that we know how to build a home, a godly Christian home. God has to build it. And he can only build it as we yield and submit and surrender to his word. Amen. We know the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, Moses said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. He didn't stop there. He said, choose it so that you and your seed, not just you, but your household, your seed, they can live. Amen. The life that you really want, it begins with being in compliance to the will of God. Amen. That you and your seed might live. Life and death, blessings and curses. Choose right fully or the right way. And then you will live, your seed will live. Isn't that good news? Amen. Absolutely is. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 9. When 
Wisdom, verse 1, has built her house. Now, this is talking about the wisdom of God. See, this flows right from chapter 8, talking about all that wisdom, the wisdom of God will produce and will do for us. And then it says, wisdom, God's wisdom has built her house. Wisdom is how we build our home and establish a Christian home. God's wisdom. Remember, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Isn't that right? Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Notice what it says in the 26th verse. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that, what? Creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, what? Read it out loud. Be fruitful and multiply. Notice, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. God is implying here that I want you and Eve to be fruitful and I want you to multiply and, and, and build a life and, 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 and have generations of people that have a Christian home and they are subduing the earth. Come on, talk to me. You be fruitful. You multiply. You subdue it. Subdue it with godly men and women. Come on, talk to me. You got to get the picture of God here. Adam and Eve, I want godly men and women in this earth. You multiply this earth. You fill the earth with godly men and women. Having godly homes, Christian homes, as it were, all over the place. Subduing the earth. God expects Christians to be in charge. Amen. Now, the birth rate of women capable of childbearing has been at its lowest and was at its lowest ever in 2017. Did you catch that? If that being the case, less and less Christian young men and women are coming earth, coming up. That's just a thought. Listen, you know who takes this scripture for face value? Muslims. They're being fruitful, they're multiplying, and they're going to take over if things don't change. They're taking over in Europe. They're over here multiplying. They have a plan. We will one day be in the White House. But yet Christians are cutting back on the sides of their families and, 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 and women are getting married, not even wanting children. Husbands are getting married. You know, I'm talking about Christian husbands and Christian men rather than Christian women getting married, not even wanting children. Yet God says be fruitful and multiply so I can have dominion through my seed. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Important that you catch what I'm saying here before I go any further. You know, Social Security and Medicaid, they said that they would not have to tap into their trust fund until probably 2022 20, or 23. And now they recently said we have to tap into it now. 90% of men, six, and people rather, 65 and over, are on Social Security, receiving Social Security. 
Medicaid. And now they now have to tap into the trust fund early. They're about to run out, in other words, a few years from now. No more Social Security. Things don't change. Now, what's, what, what's behind that? Nobody's having babies. Social Security is paid by the taxes that, 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 that young people pay to cover Social Security for the retirees. In 1950, there were about 16 workers per retiree. Today, less than three. Less than three workers per retiree. So how can the Social Security system last? And then the life expectancy is 85 now. Retire at 65, you got 20 more years. Who's going to pay for that retiree benefits for, for the additional 20 years? And birth rate is at its lowest. Less and less people in the workforce to cover the retirees. Amen. God said be fruitful and multiply. I just threw that out, but God's purpose was so we can have dominion. His sons and daughters, Christian families running the earth. Amen. Let's get, go further in this lesson. Turn to one other scripture, Proverbs chapter 15. Talking about establishing a Christian home. Now, with that information I just gave, God better be your source. Amen. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the government has the right to change your Social Security benefits anytime they want to. They have the legal right to do that. I don't care how much you paid in for the last 30 years and 40 years working. I don't care how much you believe is due you at any time. They can change it, and you can't do anything about it. God's my source. So security benefits not ever going to be my source. Amen. Never, ever. I have a God who said, I'll, I, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'll never beg for bread. My bills will always be paid. God will somehow supernaturally Amen. supply my every need. Some people, they just, you know, I'm, I'm going to get Social Security. I'm going to get Social Security. They already tap into the trust fund. It's already running dry. I'm supposed to get 2000 a month for Social Security. They can always change it. They can adjust your benefits anytime they want to. There is legal precedence for that. They went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that I don't care, my own words, how much you paid in. We can change it if we need to. Isn't that bad news? But for us, it doesn't matter. Amen. I put it this way, for me, it does not matter. But, but because as for me and my house, we serve the Lord and God watches over us, provides for us, takes care of us. He's my source. Is God your source? I mean, I brought my tithes and offerings saying, God, you're my source. I didn't hold back. You're my source. I look to you to meet my needs. Amen, everybody. Amen. Proverbs 15, verse 24. Put it on the screen, please. Verse 24. The way of life winds upward for the wise. Anybody wise? If you're wise, you're going to do it God's way, and your way of life takes you up. The way of life winds upward for the wise that he may turn away from hell below. Amen. 
Hell meaning Sheol, hell, a physical place, but also my life, my way of life winds upward, and I can turn away from all the hell of this life. Because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. There should be a distinction between the Christian and the non-Christian. You believe that or not? Now, just because two people profess Christ before they get married doesn't mean they're going to have a Christian home. And you need to understand that. You can all day say, I'm saved, and she can say, I'm saved, and you can get married just as a piece, or I marry you, or some other minister marry you. That doesn't mean you're going to have a Christian home just because you say you're saved. You have to make a decision to have a Christian home. You have to make a decision to have a Christian home. I mean, two Christians get married, and, you know, and they don't have a Christian home, and it could be for a number of reasons. There can be abusive situations in the home, mental abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. There can be vulgarities. There can be a life of individualism. You should have stayed single then. Amen. Amen. Come and go when I want. Do what I want when I want to do it. Individualism. That's two supposedly Christians. That's not a Christian home, though. Not, none accountability. They're not accountable to one another. Not accountable about anything. You can just go and rip and run, come and go, and nobody, and, and you better not ask where I'm going either. <laughs> Love you, Lord. <laughs> Now, you're a lying wonder. (laughs) Not not love you, Lord. Where do you get that love you, Lord, from? God wants us to have a Christian home. You agree with me or not? Now, this subject here involves married people, single parents, and single. Subject involves our married, single parent, and single population. And I'm going to quickly give you some things, requirements relative to a Christian home in all three areas. And then I want to get to talking about the very first point. So for our married population, our single parent population, and our single population, this subject applies to you, establishing a Christian home. Well, I'm not married. Why can't it apply to me being a single? Are you supposed to have a Christian home as a single person? I mean, you're single, you're supposed to have a secular, ungodly, carnal, worldly home? People are supposed to come to your house and listen to secular music because you're single. They're supposed to have a beer. It's in the fridge. Help yourself. Because you're single. It's only when you get married that you're going to try to have a Christian home now. So it applies to everybody. Single parents, married couples, and our single population. Can I get an amen? Amen. So far, and some of the things I'm going to share, some of these foundational stones, as it were, will overlap in the three areas. For our married people, to establish a Christian home, you have to have a personal relationship with God. I'm going to talk about that later. And secondly, you have to have a home environment that allows the presence of God. And then thirdly, You have to understand, have to have an understanding and a fulfilling of the unique and complementary roles. You have to be committed to understanding and fulfilling the unique and complementary roles of each other. There's a unique role of a man, a husband. There's a unique role of a wife. And there's a unique way that God expects them to complement one another. And you cannot have a Christian home and you don't understand that and you're not committed to fulfilling that. Are you here? And and then, number four, you have to have a commitment to honoring your vows. 
You have to take your vow seriously. Amen. Marlon, get the mic. Tell that story about your friend and the family. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, I had a phone conversation with one of my relatives recently who um, married a gentleman that was, I don't know exactly how old she was when she married him, but he was a lot older. 20 years older, I think. Yeah, about more than 20 years older. And so he is, his health was declining and uh, she was teaching in the school system and um, she tried to get some help looking after him, but she was not pleased with the quality, quality of, of the care that he was getting. And so as much as she wanted to continue to teach, she, uh, she quit so that she could take care of him herself. And uh, she said when people questioned her about why didn't she put him somewhere or whatever so that she could continue uh, teaching, she said that uh, she, she told him she, she didn't make a vow to the school system. Amen. You know, that her vow was to God relative to her husband. Yeah. And she said, uh, when someone said, well, you're going to have a lot of feelings, you know, if he passes away, she says, one thing I won't feel is guilt. Yeah. Because I am, you know, she, she had a high regard for the vows that she made. So, so for married couples, there has to be a commitment to your vows and an honoring of your vows. I thought that was a good example there. All her friends or some of them, well, why don't you do this or that? Hey, my vows was to God for to my husband. And so you need to possibly revisit your vows sometimes. See if you're still committed to them. And you're walking them out. And then number five, for married couples, it demands a modeling of God in front of your children or to your children. I'm talking about establishing a Christian home. Is every parent modeling God in front of their children? Modeling God to their children? Or are or our, or our children having problems serving God because of you? So there has to be a modeling of God to your children or in front of your children as a married couple in order to have a Christian home. And then lastly, for a Christian home, married couples, there must be Christian education. God's word should be read, meditated, and studied and absorbed in the home. Amen. You ought to read your Bible to your children. Amen. You ought to pray with your children. Are you here? Amen. If you ever read Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says, when you get up in the morning, talk to them about the Lord. Amen. When you go out the door, talk about the Lord. When you come back in, talk about the Lord. When you sit down at dinner, talk about the Lord. Teach your children about the Lord. Amen. Christian education, biblical worldview, pray with and teach the Bible to your children. Get them involved in church and to, in the helps ministries Amen. and activities in the church. And put them in a Christian school or homeschool them. That's if you're going to be committed to establishing a Christian home. They have to have Christian education. And notice the Christian education starts in the house. Amen. Christian schools only supplement what you do at home. But they can't get mixed messages. Now, to the single parents, and I'll come back later and talk about some of these things in, 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 in another, uh, at another time. But single parents, what, what are the foundational stones for the single parents? And I said these things, these things overlap. Number one, your personal relationship with God. Number two, 
your home environment, allowing for the presence of God, a single parent. Then number three, you're modeling God in front of your children. And number four, Christian education. So for single parents, pretty much the same. Just a couple things that are different between married couples and a single parent. You got that? Put them back on the screen, one, two, three, four, on single parents. So single parents, a personal relationship with God. Number two, your environment in the home, a godly environment. Number three, you're modeling God in front of your children. And then finally, number four, Christian education. And then for our singles, the foundational stones for a Christian home are as follows. Your personal relationship with God. And then number two, your home environment. In other words, as a single person, people step into your home and they can't do what they do outside the home. Amen. Amen. Just don't do it because you're a Christian. And it's your house. You don't smoke in my house. You don't drink in my house. Right. You don't cuss in my house. We don't watch that in our house. You can't bring it in the house. See, because you, you are establishing the presence of God in your home. And then lastly, for the singles, there must be a commitment to being a vessel under honor. To establish a Christian home, you have to have a commitment to being a vessel unto honor. Now, I want to talk about today the first point, a personal relationship with God. What are we talking about today? To establish a Christian home, there must be a personal relationship with God. Now, there are several examples in the Word of God about people that had a personal relationship with God. Enoch, did he not have a personal relationship with God? The Bible says Enoch walked with God. The Bible says Enoch pleased God. The program you view today is available on CD and DVD. DVDs are available for $16 and CDs for $7. Please indicate the item number when ordering. Call 704-602-6011 to order by credit card. Or write MTCM PO Box 240433, Charlotte, North Carolina 28224. We appreciate the gifts of support from our viewing audience who help us get the good news of God's Word to people in need. Checks should be made payable to More Than Conquerors Ministries or simply MTCM. To support the ministry through online giving, log on to www.vccenter.net. Address all correspondence to MTCM, P.O. Box 240433, Charlotte, North Carolina, or email us at churchoffice at vccenter.net. You are invited to join us at The Dome, located at 7228 Kings Ridge Drive for Sunday morning services at 10 o'clock a.m. Sunday and Wednesday evening services are held at 7 o'clock p.m. September through May and 7.30 p.m. June through August. Services and classes for children and youth are held at the Victor B. Youth Building, located at 7224 Old Pineville Road. Call 704 602-6010 for information about daytime Bible class. Don't miss the next life-changing message on the More Than Conquerors telecast.